It's pretty much common knowledge at this point, but when Nickelodeon started the Nicktoons in the early 90s, there were three main cartoons that sold it. Doug, Rugrats, and Ren and Stimpy. One of these cartoons went on to be a pop culture phenomenon, the most popular show on the entire network for a long time. One pushed the boundaries and changed the expectations for what could be done in a kids show. Y you know, and then there was Doug. While Rugrats was clearly the most successful of these shows, it's arguable that the most popular show was Ren and Stimpy which was able to break through the preconceived notion that cartoons were only for kids, and was able to be just as popular with adults, with its focus on gross art and darker humour compared to the other shows from the time, which was all down to one person, the infamous John Chris Felucci. The show was so popular with adults, that over a decade after it initially aired, John was contracted by Viacom to create an adult version of Ren and Stimpy, which we now know as Ren and Stimpy Adult Party Cartoon. Do I need to go into details about this man? No, not really. But let's do it anyway. After being expelled from college in 1978, John moved to California where he worked on properties such as Tom and Jerry and Mighty Mouse. He's been very open about how much he hated most of the shows he animated for while working under Deke or Hanna-Barbera. While I was working for all the crummy studios in LA in the 80s, doing shows that I hated and that everyone that worked on hated, I kept having this dream that someday I would sell something of my own. With him wishing animation were more creator driven, with the artists getting to make the decisions and input. And this was the exact idea Nick had in mind when coming up with the concept of Nicktoons, more creator driven shows, which led to the development of John's claim to fame, Ren and Stimpy. It was a show starring the titular characters Ren Hoek and Stimpson J. Cat, with Ren being the angry one and Stimpy being the idiot one. And the show is about them just kind of doing whatever. Sometimes they're in space, sometimes they're rubber nipple salesmen, and sometimes they're just in a house, doing whatever. I used to think this show was just pointless gross out on top of really good animation, but after watching many of the episodes, it was actually really funny. Ren Hollick, what are you doing? Shame on you! You leave his little pants on! I've already gone over how popular the show was, with even Matt Groening calling it the only good cartoon on TV. After The Simpsons, of course. But what I didn't mention was how horrible it apparently was to work on. John, for better or for worse, but most definitely for worse, is a perfectionist, which led to many episodes missing their scheduled air date, and it's all because John wanted the show to be the best it could. There's something kind of commendable about that, but at the same time, you know, you gotta get the show out at some point. Nick's relationship with John was pretty brutal, with them demanding episodes that John just didn't have finished because of how strict he was. Artists would be forced to redo a scene over and over again until it was to John's high standard, with his rule that a character could never make the same face twice. I urge my artists all the time to never draw an expression that they've drawn before. I say, you're not allowed. If I've seen that expression before, erase it. As a matter of fact, if you do a real nice drawing for him, it just happens to duplicate something that's been done before. He'll throw it out. He even had his name replaced with Rem and Spum in the credits of certain episodes that he felt weren't up to his standard. And sure, this all made for a show that, that in my opinion lacked in substance a little, excelled at character animation, with everyone being so expressive and felt like the characters had real weight to them, but it must have been hell to work on. Well after the show's second season, Nick were fed up with John's antics and decided to fire him, and so the show fell under the hands of Bob Camp and was now being animated by Games Animation, rather than John's studio Spumco. Although it was most likely due to his failure to deliver episodes on time, John cites the episode Man's Best Friend as the reason for his termination. The episode was banned from airing, and I mean, rightfully so. I don't know why John thought the character smoking cigars and then bashing his owner's face in would be approved by standards and practices. So you'd now think, perfect, now that John is gone they can make the show in a timely fashion and it'll continue to be a success, right? Well, no. While John was ultimately the one thing holding the show back, he was also the main reason why the show was good in the first place. Many fans said once he was fired, the show started to decrease in quality, with many of the show's elements staying the same. Now at first the show staying the same doesn't seem like an issue at all, if anything it's a good thing. But when John was with Ren and Stimpy, it was constantly going above and beyond what was expected from them. Call the police. But now it felt like they were only doing things like gross out because they felt as if it was what people expected them to do. While it did cause the show's downfall, I won't deny that it was probably for the best that John was fired. It made complete sense to do so. You've got this incredibly popular show that you can't earn new episodes for because the creator thinks that one frame could be a little better. Of course you would fire him. So the show was cancelled in 1995. 
But seven years later, we got a revival. Ren and Stimpy Adult Party Cartoon, airing on Spike TV, the first network for men. Finally, John was brought back to do the Ren and Stimpy series some justice. We can just forget the later seasons ever happened because they're coming back, baby. And it's for adults, so John finally won't be shackled by those corporate swines who tried to silence his creative vision. It lasted three episodes. Adult party cartoons without a doubt one of the most hated pieces of animation. And honestly, I can't really see why. Like, it's bad, don't get me wrong, it's really bad. But I don't really see much to get worked up over. Maybe growing up on South Park has just desensitised me to gross out in foul language. But I see people on the internet say things like, This show made me vomit whenever I saw some scenes. And I can't help but laugh because most of the stuff this show is really fucking tame by today's standards. It's just kind of a bad show and that's about it. The show's premise is basically the same as the original. Ren and Stimpy are put in some random scenario and we watch their antics for a while. There's still a ton of slapstick, gross out and dark humour. But if it's so similar then why was it hated? Like, Adult Party Cartoon is almost the exact same as the original. But I think that it all comes down to executive pushback. In the ads for Adult Party Cartoon they suck John's dick half the time. You created Ren and Stimpy. One of the most demented cartoons of all time. You idiot. It's part of the American vernacular. So I wouldn't be surprised if they were a lot more willing to give in to his demands with this show. But when you're under strict limitations, like with the original, it causes you to have to think outside the box and be more creative with how you tell your jokes. For example, the episode where Ren and Snippy are rebel nipple salesmen. The entire joke of the episode was that the characters would keep saying the word... Nipple. I think we can all agree, not a very funny joke. But since Nick would only let them say it a few times, they knew they had to make the times when they did say it count, which gave us hilarious moments like this. I believe... One day that everyone will know the wonders of my nipples. But now that they can do whatever they want, there's nothing clever about the humour. It's just, look, a character vomits. That sure is funny. Their willingness to do what he says is especially evident when you look at the length of each episode. Some are your standard 22 minutes, but they're constantly fluctuating. Some are 22, some are 30, and the worst offence to this being a 40 minute long episode. The Ultrists perfectly sums up my main issue with the show. Jokes drag on for way too long. Scenes will go on for minutes on top of minutes where we're just watching the same reused piece of animation. And the animation is great. Apart from the spastic editing in the backgrounds that will sometimes change out of nowhere, the animation is better than ever. But it's hard to appreciate the animation when I constantly find myself looking away from the screen because it's just so boring. It also didn't help that John says some of these episodes were made as fan requests. He genuinely thought he was doing right by the fans with these episodes. When we first started getting fan letters uh, in 1990 for the premiere of Brandon Stimpy, we got a million letters where people said, hey man, you gotta like gross me out. Do a whole cartoon just for me or it's just completely disgusting. I just don't see this as anything more than an insult to the original show. Like maybe if they were nothing alike then you could separate the two as, as different entities, but nope. They even made a sequel to the classic episode from the original show, Fire Dogs, where nothing about the original is involved. Around 30 seconds in, the fire chief from the original randomly turns into a different character, and suddenly the episode that was originally about a fireman becomes making fun of fat people for almost 30 minutes. Like I mentioned earlier, the show was cancelled after three episodes, with another three being completed but never aired due to Spike TV's animation block not doing too well. The other three would have aired, but only three episodes aired due to delays in episode delivery. Looks like old habits die hard, don't they, Johnny boy? They were later dumped on DVD along with the banned episode from the original. Although we do know of a bunch of cancelled concepts they were going to use. Like a prequel and sequel to Ran Seek's Help. Oh joy. It was immediately panned by critics, but some did enjoy it. With one saying, With snot as side dishes and vomit as gravy. The foulness is overwhelming. Yet also clever. Crick Felucci's satire may be obvious, but he's not just making puke jokes for nausea's sake. What? No, that's exactly what he's doing. Hey man, you gotta like, gross me out. Do a whole cartoon just for me or it's just completely disgusting. It's also rumoured that Spike wanted to make a Spongebob adult party cartoon, but Steven Hillenberg wouldn't allow it, with him being against the idea of spin-offs. <coughs> <coughs> I say rumoured because the only proof I can find of this is that someone's dad's friend's neighbour's dog's cousin worked at Spike and heard about it. It's sad that this is what Ren and Stimpy went out with. Although it was announced a while back that John was going to return to make a new Ren and Stimpy short to play before the third Spongebob movie. But I, I, I don't see that happening for 
reasons. It's a shame such talent was wasted on a man like John K. He's probably off hiding in a cave somewhere, running his blog, making cartoons, or even YouTube videos. Maybe he's making the video you're watching right now. Come on, John.